Let's talk about section 5.6, solving recurrence relations by iteration. Now, I mentioned in the previous video that when you have a recursively defined sequence, one challenge is when you need to know a term that's, let's say, the hundredth term or the thousandth term. Well, if you have a recursive definition for that sequence, then knowing the hundredth term is going to require you to know what the 99th term is, and to know the 99th, you need the 98th, and so forth. So you need to generate all those terms, okay, which perhaps you uh, would be inclined to use technology to do. Um, but the question is, could we come up with an explicit formula that you can just plug in a hundred and know what the hundredth term is? Okay, um, that's where this process of iteration comes in. So in order to find an explicit formula for a recursively defined sequence, iteration may be used. The method of iteration involves writing out several terms of the sequence in order to find a pattern that gives an explicit formula. So you are looking for a rule by writing out the terms and um, sometimes not necessarily simplifying those expressions because you want to you want to see a pattern there. So sometimes it's easier to to see that before you simplify, and you'll see what I mean when we look at our examples here. So uh, one example of a recursively defined sequence is a sub k equals a sub k minus 1 plus 3 for k greater than or equal to 1, and a naught or a sub 0 is equal to 5. Okay, so the first term is 5, or the zeroth term is 5, and and then what this is telling you is to get to the next term you add three and to get to the term after that you add three again and so forth so you're always adding three to the previous term okay pretty straightforward um recursive definition here so if we want an explicit formula and we want to uh, use iteration to get there we can say okay a sub zero is five a sub 1, 5 plus 3, and I'm just going to leave it as 5 plus 3 rather than write it as 8, and you'll see why as I continue. A sub 2, well, we add 3 again, so it would be 5 plus 2 times 3. A sub 3 would be 5 plus 3 times 3. So if we add 3 each time, we're really changing that factor in front of the three, right? Um, I could have written a sub two as five plus three plus three, and a sub three as five plus three plus three plus three. Um, but having it written in this form makes it pretty clear at this point what the pattern is. So we can say a sub k is 5 plus k times 3 for k greater than or equal to 0. So this is no longer a recursive definition. If we want to know the hundredth term, we can just plug in 100 for k, and it would be 5 plus 100 times 3. So it would be 305. Um, so that's iteration, and that's you know going from a recursive definition to an explicit formula. Sometimes more challenging than other times, of course. This type of sequence, by the way, is an arithmetic sequence. Okay, whenever you're adding the same amount each time to get from one term to the next. Okay, let's look at another example b sub k is 7 times b sub k minus 1, for k greater than or equal to 1, and b naught, or b sub 0, is equal to 2. So the first term is 2, or zeroth term, 2, um, and then each time we multiply by 7 to get to the next term. Okay, so with iteration, again, I'm not going to simplify the different terms because what I'm 
want to do is write it in whatever form is most convenient for determining what the pattern is. And a simplified expression is not necessarily the most useful way to find that pattern. So rather than write b sub 1 as 14, I'm going to write it as 7 times 2. And if we multiply that by 7 to get b sub 2, we get 7 squared times 2. Multiply that by 7 again to get b sub 3, we get 7 cubed times 2. So again, after just a few terms here, it becomes pretty clear what the pattern is. That factor of 7 or we get a new factor of seven each time so that the exponent is going to increase by one. So b sub k evidently is seven to the kth power times two. And that's for k greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and so again, if we wanted to know, you know, what is the 50th term of this sequence, we don't have to go all the way from b sub 0 to b sub 50 to answer that. We could just substitute in 50 for k in the explicit formula. And this is an example of a geometric sequence. Now, lots of sequences are neither arithmetic or geometric, um, but this is the process of iteration. And regardless of what type of sequence it is, iteration is intended to help us establish what the pattern is, um, what, what an explicit formula is. That concludes the chapter five material. Um, the next section we get into is the beginning of chapter six, which gets into set theory. We did a little bit in chapter one involving sets. Um, so here we're gonna explore that topic a little bit further. Um, the next section's title is Set Theory Definitions in the Element Method of Proof. So we're not totally getting away from the concept of proofs, but, um, but there will be a little bit uh, in chapter six where we talk about, for example, how to prove that one set is a subset of another, or how to prove that two sets are equal. Okay, and those will be direct proofs generally. Uh, hope you found this video helpful. See you in the next one.